<laughs> Mama Francisca Duncan Williams is simply a woman that loves the Lord. Um, it all started way, way, way back in the 70s. I remember um, when I was just nine years old, I said to my mom, I said, Mom, you know what? When I grow up, I'm going to be a Catholic nun. At that mm -hmm. time, you know, all we had was um, the Orthodox, the Catholic, the Methodist. And, and I used to visit the Catholic Church and then the Presbyterian Church. So I said to my mom, that's what I was going to be. But the thing was that I, I had this passion in me about the things of God. So as little and young as I was, I love the house of God. It will interest you to know that at that tender age, 10, 11, 12 years, I was already a Sunday school teacher. Wow. Yes. I was gathering the, the, the children at Teshinungwa Estates. And, um, you know, we, we had the Sunday school every morning. I would walk. And, of course, my mother also gave her house up for church. So the whole thing was there, you know, in, in and out. It was in my DNA. It was outside. It was everywhere. I was a Sunday school teacher. I would walk. Um, if you know anything about Teshinungwa Estates, we had the first, second, and third junction. And I would walk, we were um, at the first junction, but I had to walk on Sunday mornings to the third junction. At that time, no car, nothing. Had to walk and then go there, do Sunday school, and then walk back to the first uh, junction and also have church in my mother's house, in our home. And then we had to wake up, clean the house, do everything, get church ready. I was, I was also an interpreter. I was also, you know, the chief aide to all the ministers. It was just wonderful. And I guess, you know, the passion kept on growing stronger and stronger. And then I became, uh, from Sunday school teacher, I became a women's leader. And then from there, you know, had a pastor's wives association. And today it's what we see. Wow. So it goes way back, but I, I, the seed was there. You know, God just put it in me and I just love to do the work of God. Wow. So Mama, tell us, what kept you going? What was your motivation? What was your inspiration? The love of God. And on also looking at some people, you know, people like uh, the late Archbishop Idahosa, you know, was my spiritual father, mm -hmm. and, and Mama Margaret Idahosa, people like uh, um, Kobna Daku and the late uh, his wife, Christiana Daku. You know, these are people, mentors, people I looked up to, people who had a passion for the things of God. And, 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 and I just love the beautiful way that God you know, uh, um, um, had their lives put together. And, and I wish that, wow, if God can do it for somebody like this, then God can also do it for me. And I realized that their passion was God. And so I also gave my life to God. And I said, wow, God, if you have made others beautiful, then you can make my life beautiful. Wow, wow. And, and I was reading somewhere um, on the net, and uh, I think we were interviewed somewhere, and made mention of the fact that even with Action Chapel, I mean, right from the start, you were there. And you used to um, do services in the mud. You, you carried on with those weights. And now we see you with something newer and bigger, Doza Citadel. Yes. What do you tell us about Doza Citadel? I mean, carrying on from Action Chapel to Doza Citadel. What is it about? What is the inspiration behind Dosa Citadel? What is, what is the motivation and what was the future for it? You see, as I even said, it didn't even start with Action Chapel. Mm. It started way back in Teshinungwa Estate, you know, with United Church. If you do go to Teshinungwa Estate today and you go to the third junction, you know, you will see this big United Church there. And that church started right from my mother's house, wow. even before Action, Action Chapel and now Dogza. The, the thing is that for me, as I've said, I always tell people, I said, I can never do anything else. If you make the mistake of making me uh, uh, a CEO of a shoe company, by the time you come, I'll give you all the shoes out. <laughs> Everybody passing on the street, come, come and take one shoe. What is your shoe size? So I can never do, I'm not a businesswoman. What I am is a woman of God. I love to do the work of God. I like to see people you know, walking in the path of God. Um, um, uh, you'll be amazed that uh, the Mama Francisca Network or the Doza Citadel 
is a, is a church aspect of the Mama Francisca network. But we also have the youth, youth network. And amazingly, you can see right here with me, some youth with me. The thing is that I believe that, you know, Bible says that train up a child in the way he should go. And when he grows, he will not depart from it. What you put into that child is what that child is going to be. And so I take time to nurture, to be a mother to, to these children. And I have a whole group of them at Accra Central. You know, people that nobody is looking after, people that don't have an offering for you. When, when they come to you, they are not coming to say, oh, Mommy, I brought you an offering. I brought you a big envelope. They would rather come and say, Mommy, do you have food to eat? Mommy, can I have transport to go home? Mommy, I need a shoe. Mommy, I need a bag. And these are the people that, you know, I love to take care of. Even though I have the adults as well, we also have the pastors network. We have the women's network. So I do all that. But I believe that this is what God has just called me to do. And it's a, for me, it's a joy. I do the work of God with all my heart. Today, as I'm talking to you, I have about four or five services before the end of the day. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, we are talking to Mama Francesca Duncan Williams, founder of Dosa Citadel, and also CEO of Mama Francesca Network. We're answering a question on Dosa Citadel. You also made mention of the Mama Francesca Network, which seems to be a bigger umbrella. Right. What is the network about? What, what is the whole vision for this network? We have. Um under the Mama Francisca network is a network of the body of Christ. I strongly believe that God has called all of us to build the kingdom, not an individual thing, not to build, you know, your, your own, but the kingdom of God. And so for me, right from the beginning, God put in my heart to bring people from all over, you know, the body of Christ from all over. There is no uh, um, demarcation when it comes to who is, can be part of it. Once you want to be a part of us, you're welcome. And, and it's, it's about the body of Christ, all the Christians coming together, you know, old ones, young ones, you know, experienced ones, inexperienced ones, let the older ones teach the younger ones, let the younger ones, you know, learn from the older ones, and, and we help one another. And so we have the youth wing, as I've already said, and um, next Friday, for example, uh, this coming Friday on the 18th, we're going to have a powerful all night, uh, you know, at the Dogza Citadel, which is right behind the, the, the Puma filling station at Hacho. And we're going to have even people like uh, Timothy Bentum there, uh, Majid Michelle is going to be there. You know, it, it's just going to be a bundle of fun. You know, young people and old people coming together. You know, of course, uh, we cannot jump anymore like the younger ones, but when we see them jump, we remember our days when we used to jump. And then we can also tell them that, hey, look at us. You know, we started like you and we can be there. You know, we also have the Pastors Network, which um, um, we meet every Tuesday morning, right there at Hacho. And I believe I'll have time to give the phone number out so people can call if sure. they are interested sure. in coming. And I want to encourage everybody to come. We also have uh, even a business network this Sunday um, evening, that is uh, on the 20th, we're going to have what we call the Enrichment Dinner, which we do once a month. And what, what is it? It's about people coming together, business people, uh, people with, with um, resources that can come and build other people. You know, we also have the women's network. We have, so we, 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 we network the total person. I take it right from, you know, the children right to adulthood mm. so, so that is what the network, network is, is about. all about so yeah. if i understand it's all about grooming people so that grooming they can people encouraging people mm. you know when you come together sometimes you feel like i don't have it you how, how did mama francisca get here but come and listen to how i started wow. i told yesterday i was preaching at a women's group i said today i said i was selling meat pies mm. i sold meat pies to start Mm -hmm. You know, so wherever you are, if it's even your pure water, forget, you know, the thing is that people are too uh, uh, um, um, uh, sensitive about themselves. 
People are too cautious about who they are. What is this one thinking about me? What matters is what God is thinking about you. It doesn't matter what a human being is thinking about you. You know, who knows who anybody is going to be tomorrow. You may be the, the pure water seller on the street today. We've heard of people who started from nothing, but God has made them somebody. And it's just for you to realize that, no, I am who God said I am. Everybody started from somewhere, of course, except for the people that, uh, you know, had it already mm -hmm. made for them. But some of us, we started from the beginning. Mm -hmm. I had to wake up at 2 a.m. every night baking meat pie. Mm -hmm. 2 a.m. standing on my feet, pregnant, with my big stomach, but yet making meat pie, selling meat pie, giving it out to people. And if meat pie, selling meat pie can help me be what I am today, then wherever you are, we encourage one another, we build one another, that in the body of Christ, nobody is a nobody. Mm. In the body of Christ, everybody is a somebody. Mm. The only secret is that you've got to realize who God has called you to be. Wow. And so some are called to be, you know, start because they, maybe they had parents, they had people to support them. But you may have nothing. My darling, start from where you are. Start from your 10 CD, start from your 20 CD. You don't have to wait for anybody. Mm -hmm. And I believe that the God of increase will increase whoever you are. Wow, so to the point where we talk about motherhood. Motherhood, on today's Mother's Day, we want to find out what's the role of a mother? Who is a mother? Who is supposed to be a mother? And if someone is a mother, what are the things that a person is expected to do? I always say that a mother is it's, um, a woman who takes a seed. Mm. nurtures that seed and gives birth to that seed and after giving birth to that seed make sure that that seed is it becomes who God has ordained for that child to be and so a mother a, a mother is a nature a mother is a nourisher a mother is an encouragement a mother has sympathy I remember when my children were growing up I was everything at every time when they needed music, I became a musician. Mm. When, when something was spoiled, I had to turn myself into a carpenter or an electrician. A mother makes sure that, you know, that's that child that God has given to, to her becomes who God has said um, um, that child will be. And, and, and you see that the, the work of a mother is not easy because mother, there are certain things you have to do. Right from the time you take in that seed, you have to make sure that this seed is going to become exactly who uh, this child must be. So there are certain things you can do. Maybe everybody is smoking. You cannot smoke because you know that child is going to be affected. That fetus is going to be affected. And so, so as, as a mother, you are you're taking care, you are protecting, you are making sure that I want this child to come out the best. And also after that, making sure that you know that child grows and, and amazingly i have four children mm. and uh, you know my, my my first girl also has children two of my girls have children but still i'm a mother mm. you know still my, my my children call me like mother and i'm i'm there so this motherhood thing never stops <laughs> wow. there, there is no cutting off point you know it continues because you realize that your children need you at every point of their lives. And so it's, it's so wonderful to be a mother. Mm. Then, then um, in your case, who, um, that you are a woman of God, I, look, I know there are several other people who look up to you, people who see you as a mother. How do you handle the pressures from all these areas, some from church, some from your home, your, your biological children, and people out there who look up to you, cry on your shoulders every now and then? Yes, it's, it's amazing. I believe that when, when God has put you in this position, he also endows you with a grace, mm -hmm. you know, and with direction. And it's not easy, as you're saying, you can tell, I mean, it's from yesterday, my phone, my WhatsApp, mm -hmm. you know, is full of messages. And I'm just praying, God, how am I going to reply everybody? But the thing is that you, God gives you, God gives you help. God gives you, directs you as to how to do it. And one of the greatest things that has helped me is the fact that for me, I do a lot of planning, mm. you know. 
uh, I'm able to wake up and say that, look, uh, at 6 a.m. I have to be at the radio station, and then from there I'm going here. And there. So my, my day is planned, my week is planned, my month is planned. In fact, I even know from now to the end of the year what I'm doing. Yeah. And so I, I do a lot of planning. Because if you are not careful, you are going, one side is going to suffer. You're going to have more time for one thing and then forget about the other. But to bring joy to everybody and to yourself, you need to really get your, your, your day planned. Wow. Now, let, let's get to the church ministry. What roles are women supposed to play in ministry? I mean, there are lots of controversies about the role of women in ministry, and lots of sections. It looks like every denomination, every church, every sect group has its own thinking about where the woman should be placed in ministry. In your own words, what do you think? is the place of a woman in ministry. Are they supposed to be supporters, supporting their men, their husbands to be there? Or they can also take um, that topic. And that whole controversy about women keep silent in church yeah. is from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Yeah. If you read 34 and 35, you, you see it. And, and Paul was telling them, said, you know what, uh, um, women, you are becoming too noisy in the church. So just be silent. Now, he said, be silent, but when you go home, ask your husbands to teach you. So this was to a particular group of people. It wasn't to Francisca. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, we were preaching at a women's, a women's uh, meeting, and the Reverend Christy Dottete said, it wasn't to Francisca, it wasn't to Christy Dottete. You know, so, so it was to a particular group of people at that time. These were women who were trying to learn. And if you know anything about the Jewish culture, you know, women sat separately from the men. And so, uh, um, one woman is sitting in one corner there, the husband is over there, and then she shouts across, Hey, my husband, what, what is the man of God trying to say? Can you explain it to me? So the man of God said, you know what, women, wives, in fact, in the Greek, that word is actually wise. You know, speaks to wives and says, wives, please be silent. If you want to learn, go home and let... Uh, um, um, you know, your husbands teach you. But you can see, even uh, when Jesus was on earth, there were women who surrounded Jesus, Mary Magdalene, all the other women, there's Priscilla, there's, you know, so, so women were used of God. Women supported the ministry. And so I strongly believe that, you know, in the hierarchy of God, of course there's a head, you know, if you are married, uh, um, and there's a man figure. Yes, why not? The man is the head, and you, the woman, can play your role uh, very uh, comfortably. You know, you can be the women's um, help with the women in the church, or whatever God has endowed you with. Maybe, maybe you have a special gift. You can also play that role. You know, so I believe that it's just a matter of um, knowing where you are and what you need to do. You know. Right now, where I am, you know, they, they, when, when it's Mother's Day, they say, oh, Mother, Mommy, you are a mother. And then when it's Father's Day, they say, Mommy, you are a father. <laughs> 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 you know, and you're enjoying it, you know. So, so I believe that, you know, know where you are, see what is comfortable, and just move according to what God has said. Of course, the man is the head. So if the man is there, yes, woman, be submissive, you know, support that role. You know, I believe that women, you know, when, when, when the Lord says, the Bible says, I will give the man a helper. It means you are, the woman will surround that man with help, with aid. And so if you are there, the man is the head. And of course, my darling, play your supportive role be the beautiful mother, be the beautiful wife, be the beautiful encourager. There are so many ways that women can be a blessing. Not, not, not necessarily standing there as also for mommy uh, uh, leadership or Emma Kuo leadership. But you can do it in your own way. You know, in whatever way God uses you, I believe it will go to your account. Wow. And many a time when people see successful um, women, we tend to think that the world has been all easy for them. Um, they've had it good, nice, beautiful. Are there some challenges that um, women face? Are there some challenges? And, and you in particular, have you faced some challenges? And if 
there are some challenges that you face. What are some of these challenges and how were you able to overcome these challenges? I have a very popular scripture that I always say to myself, since the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God so found and the violence of taken by force. You know, even Jesus didn't have it easy. If Jesus didn't have it easy, the Pharisees were there, the Sadducees were there, all these people were there. One day they called him a demon, one day they said he was this, one day until that time they crucified him. If Jesus went through his challenges, how much more us? You know, so, so ministry, yes, definitely, there, there, there's a devil that does not want us to make it. Right from the beginning, I, I preached something from Genesis chapter 3 and 15. I, and I was talking about where God was talking to Satan and, and the serpent. And said to the serpent, because you have done this, I will put enmity between your seed and her seed. And her seed will bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Now, I call it the serpent, the woman, and her seed. So right from the garden, you know, ministry, ministry has not been easy. Mm. Doing what God wants you to do, there's a serpent, there's a devil that doesn't want you to reach your goal. But you have to overlook, there is no challenge, there is nothing that will come your way that God does not see you fit to handle it. Mm. So the God that called you is the same God that will empower you. So for me, my secret has been, which others can adopt free of charge, is that when I face challenges, I go back to God. I say, God, you know what? You called me. This is not me. And so give me the way out. Give me the strength. Give me the wisdom. How do I do it? And it's, it's a joy. It's not been easy, but God takes you a step at a time. And you realize that one challenge has become a stepping stone. One challenge has become a, a learning ground for you. You know, I always say that when you are tested, it's not because God wants to kill you, but God wants to make you better. You know, like, like a woman in the labor world. Oh, I, when I went to the labor world four times, it wasn't easy, oh, my brother. It wasn't easy, especially when that big head is coming out. Oh, you feel like you are losing your life. There was a time I felt like, oh God, let me just die. Is it death? It's okay, let me. But when the baby comes out, what happens? There's so much joy. And after a while, that woman who was shouting, I will do it again, I will do it again. After a while, the next year, you see her again, shouting again, I will do it again. But the baby comes and she's there again. So it's not easy. It's, it's, you know, sometimes it's tough. But hey, go back to your God and realize that. God has called you. You know, God has given me, for me, I see this thing as what God has called me to be and I must be, I must make it. Wow. If not, you get to heaven and God says, what I called you to do, did you do it? Oh, no, no, because somebody said something about me, because somebody laughed about me, so I didn't do it. God will say, no, no you haven't done well. So I want to get there. And have God say to me, well done. I'm just remembering the story of Esther. Mm. And I want to say to women, younger women out there, that get a mentor. Mm. It's so important to get a mentor. Somebody who has been there. Somebody who has gone through it. My mother always said, girl, you know why your mom, you, God gave you me to you? It's because I should tell you that, hey, look, I've been there. Don't put your hand in that fire. It's going to burn you. So get a mentor. And, and I want to tell all young women out there, if there's anybody who needs advice, you need me to help you, feel free and give me a call. You know, I am there for you. There are other women of God who are there, people who have been through it. And they can also tell you, this is the way we did it. When we went through our challenges, this is how we did it. This is how we made it. This is how we've been successful. And if it's okay, can I give them my number? Please, you can. Let me give you my number. And please feel free. You are out there. You are in a fix. You don't know what to do. Just give me a call. Or even you're in ministry and you need a way out, just give me a call. And the number is 054-758-9141. 054-758-9141. And just give me a call. I am there. I will talk to you, encourage you. And uh, we will do this thing together. If I have made it, you can also make it. And uh, most of all, remember, there's a God by your side. That God who called you will equip you. 
he will he will help you. Yesterday, for example, you know, when I, I was going for that program, the Lord just spoke to me, call this young lady, uh, Gabriella. Mm. And I called her in the morning. I said, Gabriella, what is wrong? Is everything okay? Your meeting is coming up. I'll be there in a few hours. And she said, Mommy, no, everything is not okay. Mm. You know, they said I can't play drums. They said, and she was getting very worked up. A young lady, her first program, you know, she's planned. She was going to have me as a speaker, have Mama Christy daughter as a speaker, other women of God as a speaker. And she was getting worked up over the fact that there was no, not going to be any drums and all that. And I just said to her, young lady, don't worry. We have been through this many times, drums or no drums. The work of God still goes on. And after the meeting, I said to her, I said, you see, I told you, drums or no drums. And it was beautiful. Wow. Yes. Wow. So give her a call. Give Baba Francis Carr, Duncan Williams, a call. And I believe that her advice would help you. Greatly, greatly. They will present them to us, Fire Falls Believers All Night, which is happening on the 18th of May 2018 at the Doza Citadel Hatcho behind the Puma Filling Station, 9 p.m. prompt. Mama, what are we supposed to expect um, at this all night? And ah, it's going to be great. It, it, it's a time of prayer. And again, it's the body of Christ. When you come there, you meet different people from different walks of life. It's going to be a prayer time, testimony time, word time, you know, building one another, praying for one another, you know, just fun in the Lord. So it's going to be great. Be there. Wow. Wow. What was a special thank you to you, uh, Mama, for um, honoring our invitation and coming on our set. And we have really learned a great deal from you, I mean, in our discussion um, today. And we believe that um, there are many people out there who listen to us to have been blessed by your messages. Very inspirational, very motivational. Thank you so much, Mama. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you too. And, we and hope... happy Mother's Day, of course, to the mother of the land, Mama Rebecca. Um, happy Mother's Day. And to all mothers happy mother's day to every mother god bless you god bless you too mama